My name is Zina Dia. I'm a BIM product manager here with Healthy Canada. And we're very excited to be here and to talk to you today about the future of digitalization and automation. Leveraging new technologies and processes that enable new and improved ways of working together, like BIM or building information model, and how they can help us be more efficient, spend less time, money, and deliver a better outcome. Before I start, I'll hand it over to my co-presenter, Serge. He will introduce himself and walk us through today's agenda. Good afternoon again, everyone. My name is Serge Abinader. I'm the Digital Construction Manager for Hilti Canada. So I'm going to go just straight into the subject. I'm going to go through the agenda, what we're going to be covering. We're going to give you just a general overview about the Hilti organization. Who are we? And then uh, the, the second point, it's going to be we're going to talk about like the shift to how we're going to get how we can digitalize our projects today. What are some of the some of the challenges, some of the benefits and some of the opportunities that we can take advantage on. And when we talk about digitalization, I think we're pointing straight to BIM. So this is the enabler, the driver uh, to the to everything that is related to any digital flow across the construction today. We're going to dig in deeper and getting like a clear understanding about BIM and how it's implemented today in our industry. So why detailed planning in BIM? Is there like, are we fully or partially doing the adoption of BIM? Is there any missed opportunities that we have to take into consideration when it comes to increasing the level of design in our model that will definitely bring in more added value across the entire, uh, uh, entire workflow of our projects today? We're going to get some of the best practices and examples on like use cases inspired by the industry practices. And just to wrap it up, we're going to just resume with what does good, good looks like when it comes to a full digital cycle on a project. And we're going to open it up for you for questions and answers. Thank you. So we'll start with a quick introduction about our company, Hilti. Hilti is a 100% family owned company that was founded in 1941 in Sean Lichtenstein. We have more than 30,000 uh, team members that create enthusiastic customers in more than 120 countries around the world, with more than 40 innovative products released each year. As the industry is changing and advancing every year, we have been also changing, developing leading edge products, solutions, technologies, and softwares for the global construction industry, helping our customers build better, faster, safer, and greener. So, digital technology plays a main role and helps us resolve many issues in the construction industry that we are facing today. One of the major issues is improving productivity. Um, although the construction industry is one of the leaders in the world's economy, it still lacks when it comes to productivity. World Economic Forum and Boston Consulting Group identified these 10 major uh, technologies and trends that improve productivity. And they also anticipate that within 10 years, full-scale digitalization could actually save the construction industry between one to $1.7 trillion annually. And today we are trying to test and to research all these mega trends that are happening in the industry. And we're also started to implement some of them and made them part of our workflows. For the time we have today, we're not going to go through all 10, but we will mainly focus on prefabrication and modular construction, autonomous construction, and building information modeling that actually ties most of these trends together. We have seen that there are some other challenges in the construction industry besides productivity, like lack of skilled labor, high project and material cost, in fact, more than 70% of projects spend more than what was initially planned. Also, safety on job sites, with the construction industry having the highest number of accidents among its workers. Also, transparency, the need for proper documentation. Digitalization is one of these challenges, the need for efficient communication and data management. 
and with the right use and adoption of digitalization, we can actually resolve most of, the, uh, of these other issues that we just mentioned here. BIM, or Building Information Modeling, is uh, a key player in digital project delivery. So today we'll be talking about BIM, one of the advancements that the digital age has brought to us. So I'm not sure how many of you are already using BIM or uh, in your projects, uh, you may or may have not. So we'll just give a brief, just in case for those who might not be very familiar with BIM, what is BIM? So BIM, to understand it, we need first to understand what we had prior to BIM or what we have on many projects still today. So prior to BIM, we had 2D drawings that were done independently using AutoCAD software as a tool. And it kind of imitates the paper and pen working process. And in case of any changes, all the data must be manually updated on every single drawing. And all the project participants must be informed about that change. So this requires a huge coordination effort that can really be reduced with the BIM approach. With BIM, we have a 3D model, a 3D representation of the project that includes coordinated inputs from all the trades. All changes are done, respective changes are done to this one centralized 3D model file of the project and all drawings and data would be automatically synchronized and immediately accessible to all project parties. So that's why, and from the name BIM, Building Information Modeling, we won't get only a 3D model that contains, like, let's say, a, what we call a digital twin or our, you know, a replica of the real project. But now what we can have also, what is more important than that, all the information of all the objects and the properties tied to that model. So, and everyone working on a project can coordinate seamlessly and know exactly because everything is in this centralized source. We have seen that um, also there are some huge advantages of um, implementing BIM in construction projects starting from uh, reduction in cost, time, labor. It gives us insights into design constructability, also helps us with site um, uh, coordination and uh, collaboration. It helps also owners in their predictive maintenance, asset tracking, and facilities management. That helps for, of course, future uh, changes and renovations. So, BIM is not a new idea or concept, and it has been with us for some time now. And here on the left, you can see this famous McLean curve, which is a strategy of shifting design efforts forward in time. And it's showing us by utilizing BIM and investing in BIM early on, we can achieve significant savings and improvements in collaboration in construction projects. So any iterations done in that stage uh, earlier on would mean less work, less effort, less cost than doing it later on in the construction stage with all the expensive fixes and all, you know, you have to bust up concrete or, you know, uh, to just uh, try to solve an issue. So it's just a matter of time before BIM techniques will completely replace the traditional working uh, and construction methods. Many countries around the world started paying attention to their BIM adoption. But the BIM implementation for different countries is on like at different maturity levels. Also surveys show that during COVID-19 lockdown, BIM was more widely adopted in the AEC industry, thus enabling projects to continue in a more in a digital and virtual environment. Also eliminating the uh, risk for project team members to have to meet and work together. Canada's made tremendous efforts in the shift to digital project delivery. So we have many companies started adopting digitalization and more owners are actually requesting for it. So as an 80 year old direct sales organization, we must embrace the reality that BIM is driving upfront design decisions. 
And looking at the full BIM workflow or even the project life cycle, we wanted to, as a company to be part of this BIM transition. As we wanted to say, like, how can we be part of this transition and how can we better serve our customers? So we have identified some process improvements using the BIM model as a tool. And what we did, we adapted to that by adding structures on the field and also in the back office on top of our existing experts. And while we are known for our strong specifications, fire and protection solutions, and also for our engineering, we wanted to bring thought leadership to the table with BIM. And now we have this new division in our organization to adapt to this and to be able to work with our customers throughout the whole life cycle of the project and offer them end-to-end -end services by being able to work with them earlier on in a more collaborative manner. So now we can start from the design, going all through construction, operations, and maintenance. So what did we, what process improvements did we identify? We looked at the BIM model and normally not everything is integrated into the BIM model. Sometimes, for example, here we can see these um, MEP pipes are modeled, but the matching fire stopping for these uh, penetrations are not being part of the model. And with Hilti having more than 30 years of experience in providing internationally approved and tested fire, fire protection uh, products, we see that there are some challenges of not integrating uh, the fire stop into the BIM planning. One of the risks is higher risks due to improvised solutions on site, also having to deal with multiple ULC systems and products on the same site, job site, which would lead to more complicated um, procurement and inspection process. Um, downtime on site waiting for engineering judgments or fire stop custom details to come through and also productivity loss due to all this wasted time spent on the job sites. Same goes for the supports for these MEP services. We see sometimes supports modeled, but they're not fully engineered or optimized. And there are also some major challenges of not including them into the BIM model like higher safety risk to site improvised solutions. Instead of having solutions that are fully engineered, fully optimized, with all clashes resolved up front, and also with all the documentation needed. Like when you hand over to the owner, you have everything planned ahead and optimized. So with our BIM services, we are aiming to change this process. So what we've done is we now can design and model fire stop and support systems. And by doing so, not only we can go inside the model and identify issues and resolve them, but now we can actually work on optimizing these designs by being able to, for example, if it's fire stop, reduce number of UL systems used on a, on a job site. We can identify these non-standard cases that require fire stop custom details and either work around them or, if not possible, issue them. Uh, same goes for the supports. Instead of just having improvised welded systems, we can go with multi-trait multi systems or fully modular racking systems. And we've seen by doing that, we can not only... It, it will, you would gain the full benefit of having a BIM project. And we can actually also bring up the level of detail um, from let's say 300 all the way to 500 by attaching non-graphical information to the model elements. Also a thing, uh, last minute I want to add to, during COVID-19, um, stock has really been an issue on all projects. So by implementing this early on, we can you know, be able to forecast and know exactly what material we need, where we need them, and at what time. So we can plan this months ahead of time. So, Hilti BIM Design Services were built around these six use cases that were inspired by the industry practices and that we bring value to projects and, uh, and it depends, of course, on the type of project. But for the time we have today, we are going to mainly talk about the first four, 
design optimization, prefabrication, advanced logistics, and BIM to field. So design optimization, being able to access the model earlier on would give us the flexibility of choosing most optimized MEP and Firestop solutions. Solutions that are fully engineered with all clashes resolved up front. So these pre-designed uh, Firestop uh, supports, including Firestop and, and anchors, we can build multiple disciplines into one single design proposal. And by placing that inside the model, we can, we can see massive optimization potential when we identify clashes all up front, finish the engineering work before anything is really even installed on site, rework would be, would be reduced, and safety would also increase. And that will also enable us to uh, do prefabrication and the advanced logistics. So with this early design partnership, we always look at ways to fully uh, standardize our designs, having the, everything designed and modeled. Also, it will enable mounting sequence by trade. So we look at ways to really optimize and really make, uh, make it possible for every single trade to work together and many times even they can share the cost. So this is an example, just want to show for a multi-trade mounting sequence. It's a hospital project that Healthy's done in the Denmark. It's uh, 800 beds. So here you're looking at this long corridor that used one single design that was very smart and very optimized because it used the ceiling and the walls. And with this, we reduced the number of anchor points, we reduced the, the time spent on site and you can see here your HVAC, and you have your plumbing, and you have your electrical. Everything is very flexible. The system is not welded. It's just having some simple connectors that you can connect and even uh, assemble or deassemble. And then you would allow also for future disciplines to be added as well. So this is just to give an example of, and this design was one design optimized for the whole corridor. Moving down to prefabrication, we actually offer to kit, cut, and prefabricate all our Firestop casting devices and support systems. So these pre, uh, uh, precast uh, devices or, or supports would be all fabricated in our uh, production environment using advanced logistics. And everything, all these assembled um, hardware would be sent to the job site directly. And we've seen by doing that, we can actually reduce the time spent uh, on installation by more than 50% and also reduce wastage by 20%. Then moving to um, advanced logistics, instead of having material sitting on site waiting to be used, now we have dedicated project managers that would work with our just-in-time logistics team and uh, our customers' planning teams. So what we do is we work on the project schedule and we make sure that everything is delivered on site according to that schedule. So according to your poor date, according, according to whatever, when and where you need everything. And this is also a live document. So we are like, let's say, offer a partnership. So we sit down in these VDC meetings and all these BIM coordination meetings, make sure that we are on top of everything and that we are also updated and have the latest and communicate that back to our, um, let's say, the logistics team, make sure that everything is uh, done properly. I'll hand it over now to Serge. So now that we've built this digital masterpiece, how, how we bring this digital information to the field today. So, and this is, this, is, this is where we see clearly gaps today on the majority of the construction sites because we see that there's like a cut in flow of digital information. So we're gonna go through how this is done and we're gonna, we're gonna look at some uh, ways of improving this, keeping in mind this, the uh, sole objective of increasing productivity, efficiency, and accuracy on our projects today. So th this phase, I would like to describe it and call it as the last 100 feet. So after doing everything in the design, in the model and everything, the last 100 feet, this is where 
this model, this digital piece first touches ground and we need to start building the project. So in this last 100 feet, we see that the model undergoes today a dramatic change, moving this digital information and handing it out as a paper plan to the contractors to start building the project. So clearly, as I've mentioned before, this is a cut in the flow of the, uh, uh, digitalization in the process. So uh, clearly to go more in depth about uh, what are like the disadvantages of working with BIM and handing out a paper plan to the, uh, to the field to start the construction, a paper plan with dimensions, this is definitely, will, this will encourage like the contractors to use manual layout. And this is where they start like pulling off their tapes and start their measurements from structural pieces or elements on the projects. We think that those structural elements are accurate, but in fact, the reality doesn't show that they are accurate. And examples of these structural elements are like column offsets, sometimes we take edge of slabs offsets, some snap control lines on long distances given by the general contractor. So this is just to zoom in on an example, for example, on where uh, we start like building up the foundation and we see some inaccuracies in the structural elements. And if we don't capture these inaccuracies ahead of time, this, th these errors are gonna be compounded because if those contractors are pulling out their starting point from these elements and they're not accurate, so moving forward with the layout, th there will be errors that are gonna be compounded. And you know, like in order to be able just to make corrections on errors down the way, it's gonna be too late. And you see that the cost is gonna increase, we're gonna fall behind schedules, and it's gonna be like cumbersome on them. So the true value of BIM would be realized when digital plans stay digital through across the entire flow of the project and through specifically those last 100 feet. So imagine like if we compare the traditional way of doing things, this is like a control point where two people will take, for example, a tape on a long distance and they're gonna pull from that line in order to lay out an element, whether in a mechanical, electrical, or any trade, you name it. Compared to if we keep a digital, digital flow on the project where we can use digital layout solutions, where we can put some prisms or targets around the job that they're fixed, they don't move, and everyone can rely on them, this is where we can increase the accuracy of our project, as well as the productivity and the efficiency. So how Hilti can help today on this uh, BIM to field, we have like a full portfolio of product, hardware, software and services that we can offer today. We have dedicated digital consultants across US and Canada that can support in the deployments of such technologies and innovations. We can support earlier on prepping the plans. We offer some CAT services when it comes to cleaning up the files, aligning the file, uh, uh, selecting the layout points or anchor points, you name it. And then we, have, we can support in offering uh, site control consultation. I'm gonna elaborate more about this. And uh, at the end, we have uh, our digital layout tools. And most recently, we've introduced as well robotics into the construction with our JBOT that we're gonna see later on. So site control consultation, this is like a very simple and relatively low cost, low cost service that our digital consultants are trained. What does it entitle? So this is where we go and we, uh, we work with the GC, with their surveyors, to be able just to set up controls on a project. So the first thing that we do is that we, we plug in targets or prisms strategically around the project that covers the entire area of the project. We position a digital layout tool based on the control points given by the certified surveyor, the surveyor of the job. Once this is done, we're measuring and recording all these control points or the prisms, and we're bringing them back to the model. This, this is gonna be like a single source of uh, information when it comes to control that all subs can use moving forward to do their layout. So we don't have any more any subs just pulling out tapes 
and using any starting point on the job. However, everyone is using a digital layout tool to position it with those targets that are sent back again to the model. So this way we keep this digital information across the entire workflow. So uh, comparing just traditional to setting up controls on a project, this, is, this will make more, uh, will, will keep the sub have high confidence to be able to position himself anywhere on the job where he can access any of these targets, position in a high accuracy and do his layout. So there will be no more fighting, for example, in with a plumber, whether his, the sleeve is in the wall, the wall is in the right place, not the sleeve is in the right place, and so on and on. So definitely being able to set up controls on a project, digital controls, will support in deploying solutions like robotic solutions, uh, automation, and digital layout tools on the project. This is, this is just three measurables like uh, uh, advantages that we can bring with this, which is you have like fewer people required to layout, one person on a total station or digital layout will be able to layout up to 400 points per day. So look at the increase in productivity, three times the number of points per day. And then we, uh, we are minimizing rework due to layout error. And then at the end of the day, we can enable time saving and deployment of technologies like robotics, prefabrications, and digital me uh, measurement tools. So this is just a use case or an example on increase in productivity up to 400% laying out with a total station on a project. This is again another use case with our JBot, 600% of productivity. JBot can go up to 700 layout points per day. And what do I mean by that layout points? JBot can lay out, can drill overhead, and can mark the hole if we have a coordinated MEP system that we need to do on a project. So with that, I'm gonna go just to show you this innovation. This is a, a, a CAN-BIM winner, price number one, our new semi-autonomous uh, overhead drilling machine, which is uh, driven uh, by BIM data from the model. We bring it into the JBot, and JBot is gonna go and do the overhead drilling for the MEP trades. Digital planning and building information modeling or BIM, are now the norm for many North American projects. By applying the BIM process, MEP coordination already happens in the design phase of a project. Powered by the data in this BIM model, JBON is a complete self-contained software and hardware system for semi-autonomously locating, drilling, and marking anchor locations overhead. This makes it the perfect solution for the faster, safer, and more accurate execution of digitally coordinated MEP systems on the job site. The operating software is easy to use and has simple guided workflows for each application. This enables a quick ramp up for operators to more safely and productively use this product in the field. The system arrives on site in a container that can be lifted by a forklift or crane, allowing easy access to the work area. When not in use, this container also works as a charging station and secure storage. When it's time to work, the operator simply drives JBot out of this container directly to the working area. In transport mode, JBot is less than three feet wide and less than five and a half feet tall. This means it can be easily driven through standard doorways or transported in an elevator or hoist. Once in the working area, the first step is to set up the PLT-300, the digital layout system which tracks JBot as it moves around the job site. The auto leveling and auto stationing features of the PLT with the step-by-step -step guided workflow make this easier. Once stationed and connected to JBot, the PLT tracks the movement of the prism on the JBot arm to within one-eighth of an inch. JBot will operate completely cordlessly for up to eight hours, and the drilling arm comes complete with a dust shroud connected to a built-in vacuum in order to help virtually eliminate dust. Additional drill bits, dust bags, consumables, and even a spare drill can all be stored in the on-tool compartments to help maximize productivity and reduce downtime. JBot is designed to execute the standard hole diameters for post-installed MEP anchors with an optimal drilling range from 3 16 of an inch to 5 8 of an inch, with the ability to operate on slabs with heights between 8.5 and, and 16 and feet. This system will work on a wide range of projects in the commercial construction sector. JBot syncs with a dedicated project cloud to access the most up-to-date design data 
enabling infield access to the planned anchor locations for the entire project. To get started, the operator simply selects the drilling size and tray, then drives JBOT into the area as indicated by the software. A simple traffic light system makes it easy to raise the drilling arm to the correct height. And then, at the click of a button, JBOT will autonomously drill and mark all the selected anchor locations within a six-foot diameter. JBOT will mark each set of holes with a unique spray pattern, as designed by trade or system type in the BIM model. And in the case of rebar hits or other infield issues, the operator can skip holes or move anchor locations as required. Of course, the as-built hole locations and drilling progress sync back to the cloud and can be accessed live in the office. Good, so just to wrap it up, on uh, we just started the session with the shift to deliver a digital project. And this is, this is how does a full digital project cycle looks like. And Hilti today can support you and help you on each and every step, whether going up to design phase, where we can optimize the design, and then we can provide engineering solutions, optimize engineering solution analysis and drawing. We can even support on the modeling side where we can model those solutions in, inside of the digital piece of your project. We can provide certified 2D shop drawing with bill of material. And that's what Xena has described as well when it comes to prefabrication and advanced logistics, cutting, kitting, and full assembly, and a full product portfolio, hardware, software, and services when it comes to uh, robotics, automation, and digital layout tools to bring that digital piece from the BIM model to the field. So thank you very much. Thank you for your participation. Thank you Have so a good much. day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zina.